Even though this life gets tough, said you gotta keep fighting. fighting. And even though it gets hard, it's gonna get hard. You home. gotta keep striving. But you gotta keep striving. Through the fears and the loss, the tears won't turn the tears off. Won't no tears in your heart's crying. Yes, Hold on to his words. words. Hold Lean on, on him. It gets better, it gets better. better. The toughest war you ever face will be domestic. It's elementary, it's been this way for centuries. Cold war was raised against us. Take seeds. off the blindness, you will see. You will see. That it ain't about them gas prices. It's all about who whip the nicest. All about them deals on bundles. Hair on fleet, don't make them up. Face beating red bottoms. That beats me, hear about them. Fit it up from head to toe, but never at their children's door. Wonder why they dying by the dozens, but it's simple, yo. Just listen. It's time we stop ignoring facts. It's time we take our family back. Fix the root and then attack. Stop making moves without a plan. Control emotions, then we stand. Calling on my kingdom and to come together. Take this land. We gotta fight our future depends. Get the head back in order, cause that's where it begins. Invest your all into your garden, water the roots to the end. Nurture the family tree and let the food feed all men. Just let us know this life gets tough. Said you gotta keep fighting. Welcome to another episode of A Mile in My Shoes, where we ask the question, how can we say we know someone if we've never heard their story tonight, man? I'm honored tonight. I got a young brother that's been rocking for, with me for a long time, man. Look, when, when, when I say family, look, from childhood all the way till now, man, a young brother after God's heart, a young brother that loved family, and I ain't even going to get on the music. That's going to be a whole nother episode. We're going to bring him back and let him share some of his music. But tonight, he's going to share his story, and he's going to share his heart, y'all, without any further ado. My homie, my brother, Kev. What's going on, my brother? Blessings, 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 brother Joe. Man, Kev. I got to pause for the cause for a moment, man, because you know it's a lot of years on this camera, man. Yes, sir. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of stories on this camera right now, man. Yes, sir. It's a lot of rises, a lot of falls. It's a lot of triumphs, a lot of failures, man. But, but one thing that remains, we still love God and we still rolling, man. Yes, Lord. How yep. many years, if, if you could guess how many years, how many years you would say, Kev? Oh, ooh, I don't want to tell my age, but uh, <laughs> I want to say about a good 18. Kev, tell the people about yourself, man. I'm just Kev, man. Uh, I grew up in a single, in a single mother home, you know, uh. Honestly, you know, part of my testimony is that I can start off with before we get into what, what God really wanted me to get into. Uh, I was born August 11, 1984. November 14th of 1984, they had to fly me from UMC Hospital in Lafayette all the way to Cheridu Hospital in New Orleans, yeah. where I died on the operating table. I had uh, fluid in my head and my, around my brain small tumor the size of a dime my uh, more large intestines than small and uh my digestive system was blocked and uh my mom was only 17 at the time mm. just turned 17 and uh she told me from what i remember she told me she got on her knees man and lift up her hands high she said lord i don't i don't know you i don't know how to pray to you but what i do know is is that if you save my son, I'm gonna dedicate him to you. Mm. And then and that's what happened, you know, growing up, going from house to house, home to home, yeah. pillar to post, you know, uh, caught a lot of spirits, dealing with generational uh, curses, generational issues, you know, yeah. from my mom's side, my dad's side, uh, the oldest out of eight, eight siblings, you know, between my mom and my dad. Yeah. Uh, actually, nine now. My daddy had another son. And uh, just me, man. 
just me never was in the streets i don't have no no drug stores to tell nothing like that you know uh no gang stores but just my life yeah you know from where god took me from that operating table and said rise lazarus until now mm. so that's that's the most i can give for them about me right now so tell me this when, when did your journey begin with christ just as far as along with the church and when you really got got into it yourself like when 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 you knew like i'm called and you and you really had that hunger for god when did it all start honestly <laughs> i tell my wife and kids the story all the time honestly uh it's because of you my brother ah uh. <laughs> like you see we got we got stories on here when i was going through life as an orphan i can see because mm -hmm. my mom had alcoholism you know what i'm saying dealing with alcoholism and i was trying to be an adult fast and when i met you i was only 17 years old you know what's crazy though Ken? i always thought you was like 25 30 God. <laughs> i pray hey, i prom like when we was younger yeah you was with all the adults yeah like, yeah like i always saw you as older like you never like joked around was kidding no you was always old <laughs> yeah like like we was climbing yeah. you know we was goofballs yeah, yeah. we was nah you was living life you you was you was living adulthood like uh, i was forced to I was kind of forced to grow up fast, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let's take it back to when I was uh, in junior high, middle school. You know, like I said, single mother. You know, I had to watch my mama go through things, man. I had to watch my mama be a car hop at Sonic driving for years, man. Making yeah. meat on welfare, child support, food stamps. You know, everything that they say the system give, we've been there, done that. I, I see my mom had to do some grown up things that she didn't want to do, but not shame to say, you know, what I'm saying? because she had to do, she had to do to take care of us. Yeah. And I was like, uh, in order for me not to focus on that, my grandmother said, just be a kid. So I started playing sports in the seventh grade football track, uh, was in choir, advanced choir, always singing something, dealing with music. Uh, and my mom was never there, you know, mm. to support me, to, 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 that's my boy, that's my son. You know, she was always, look, go do what you got to do, but I got to, I got to make sure this light stay on, you know. And I, and after a while, after being in high school, and then my grandmother passed away, I was like, you know what? Nah, bro. I had to force myself to be older. I was always around my uncle and my cousin and, and, uh, uh a couple other cousins and they was older they, they they was showing me things teaching me things uh on how to be in a a, a, a young man you know or, or, or the best way that they knew how you know what i'm saying let's say that like that and when i met you and your brother uh i was actually 17 messing with somebody at church you already know of uh and she was 21. yeah so, so that was my first experience of a uh, an adult relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I was forced to think different and, and and move different and you know what I'm saying? Uh and I got addicted to that. And that's where some of the curses came in from my dad being, you know, whoremongering, you know, all that stuff, man, gift the gab, you yeah. know. And I've been dealing with older women ever since then. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh but I had to mature fast. I, I had to grow up quick because of my brothers and my sister. You know, I had to show them we we my on my dad's side, my dad boys, my dad was never none of our lives. Yeah. Still today. And uh and on my mom's side, only my baby brother grew up with his dad for a certain limited time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I had to play father figure. I had to learn how to cook, clean, you know, yeah. make a little hustle. You know, help mama pay this, help mama pay that. Get a pack of cigarettes here, get a, a dozen of crabs there. You know, I had to just yeah. grow up, you know. Real life off the jump. Off the dump. And that's why you see me so serious. That's why you see me, because I've been doing that since 11 years old. 
You know what I'm saying? Cooking, with, cleaning, washing, doing everything. When, when we was playing, Kev was working. Yeah. Yeah. Washing clothes. Oh, no. Couldn't stop. Couldn't stop. You know? So, so how, did, how do you think that it, the way you grew up affected you once you got into them older years, in your, in your 20s and approaching 30? Like, how, how did that affect you? What you went through younger, how did it affect you? Honestly, everything has a cause and effect, mm -hmm. but I think it affect me in a positive way, bro. Talk to Cause, me. Because like I say, when I was that young at 16, 17, and I met you and Core at St. James, I saw how your mom and dad was raising y'all. Yeah. How y'all came from uh, from the East Coast, you know, as a family migrated down here. And, and and people love y'all. Y'all was happy, man. And uh, I saw a lot of other families in there. And some yeah. of them, like me, DeMarcus, you know, we didn't have no families. We, we uh. you know what I'm saying? We, we was forced to do it different. Y'all even accepted my little cousin, Corey, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And, to the fam, you know what I'm saying? So, and showed us how to be family united. So right then and now, I was like, man. And then I seen the talent y'all had. You know, and I was like, man, they're not doing this on the block. They're not doing this in the hood. We got these young brothers, man, playing drums, playing keyboards, singing, rapping, acting. Oh, man, it, it, it just blew my mind. I tell people this story all the time. I'm like, the the, the, the Spriggs, love them. Love them. Love them. The Bellows, love them. Oh, I remember the bell. Shout out to the Bellows, man. That's when I gave my life. That's when I gave my life to Christ. Well, I ain't gave my life to Christ. That's when I made my decision of I don't want to do stupid, immature things anymore. Yeah. I want to be able to grow up like these brothers, you know. But I was missing something. I was missing that 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 family. Yeah. I was missing that family. But then God say what the devil took, he gave back. Y'all accepted me as family. Mm -hmm. And it's been for years. Like I know when I left and everybody moved and went their ways, I always kept that thought. And I always kept you and you and your brother in my heart. You know what I'm saying? Even to being okay. in weddings and everything. And I gracious, honored. You know what I'm saying? So that made that's what that's what that's what entangled the breakthrough for me. Watching y'all, watching mm -hmm. y'all grow, especially knowing because you have a backstory too, and knowing where you came from and the things you've been through, and seeing my little brother, like, man, Joe's still doing it, still today after all these years. I'm still inspired by you, and it it motivates me to be a man of God. But yeah. when I gave my life to Christ, my God, it was a Wednesday night at Bible study at Crossroads Church. And they had two twin sisters, some mm -hmm. cartoon sisters. And it was testimony night for some reason. Yeah. And they gave their story on how they lost their parents. Their parents led them to Christ, but then they lost their parents. And when they lost their parents, they felt like they lost everything. Mm. And uh, one went on drugs real bad. The other one started prostituting real bad. And then uh, one of them was finna die. And they, they found the other one on the streets and told him that, you know, hey, your sister is in the hospital fighting for her life. This and that, the, the prostitute, she, she went there and she she said the same thing that kind of what somewhat my mama said to God, not knowing who God truly is. And people don't understand when you say those things to God, you testing the entity, you're testing the spirit by the spirit. So mm -hmm. he show up and show out every single time yes and sir she like, said god i don't know you I, I, I don't i don't know you anymore i don't even know if you you accept me anymore for the things i've done i, I went astray from you and this and that and she said she saw a, a a spirit like a holy spirit and the angel wrapped her arms around her sister and it's like a, it bred life in her and everybody just stopped crying right there in church man and then Pastor Abe's, uh, and she said that's when she gave her life to Christ. And Pastor Abe's was like, if anybody is not moved by this, something is wrong because it's moving me. Mm -hmm. 
like if you ready if you, if you ready for God to breathe that same life in you just stand up and lift your hands and accept him and I stood up and cried man mm. I stood up and I cried man because I don't know if you remember Joe God used you to save my life at that very time that moment there when I got saved this was in 2014 2014 man this was 2014 I was finna commit suicide. 2014. I was finna commit suicide and you called my phone. I don't know if you remember, Joe. I, I remember. I, I tell a story and you I was on I was on Highway 49 headed to Sunset to go take care of them house. I remember, man. And you say, bro, I don't know what you're going through. I know you're dealing with a lot of stuff, but don't do it, Kev. Mm -hmm. I hear your voice in my head, like when I think of that. Hey, I remember, man. You was you was done. I was I was I, I was going seventy two miles an hour and trying to go off of the Grand Couture Bridge, exit eleven. In a Nissan Pathfinder, I ain't gonna never forget. And when I try to turn the wheel, the wheel kept get, like like it jammed like a gun jam, like like it kept jamming like it just was an autopilot going straight. And you called my phone, and right after you said that, man, I said, all right, man, all right, man. And I hung up the phone and brother Kevin called right after that. He said, come to my house. Mm. And what so happened, brother Kevin, uh, to get to his house was the next exit. And then when I went to exit off, it went off. Mm. I cried that night, man. I remember that time, man. And the life going on at that moment. Yeah. And then that's why I wanted to talk about you know, talk about marriage, you know, my testimony, what I've been through, because that was the darkest days of my life. The darkest days of my life, man. Let's talk about it, man. Somebody need to hear this, man. I, I've been married to my kid's mama for 10 years. Mm -hmm. Was with her for 11 first two years started off good real good man everything always started off good in the beginning man everything always started off as flowers and candy and teddy bears and the things started to decline you know and when i found out we was having my oldest daughter which just turned 17 on father's day I went straight offshore like, man, I got to be a man. Here I go with that same mentality when I was back at St. James. Like, man, I got to be a man. I got to step up again. Know that same mentality when I was with my little brothers and my sister. I got I to I gotta be a man. I got to be a man. So I got to go straight offshore. Boom. Go offshore, man. Start making money, making money, making money, making money, but not seeing nothing. Mm. Not seeing nothing. Come home, the bill's not paid lights off water off eviction notice here eviction notice there threaten to repo my truck yeah i'm like what's going on man what you doing all kind of adultery started happening mm -hmm. all kind of drinking sexual morality homosexuality everything just started happening but i never gave up I, I tried to continue to lead her to christ because again where i came from seeing the things that i've seen at st james like i said the bellows took me underneath their wings you know let me live and they live with them and they showed me how to you know be a young man treat a woman how to treat a wife and this and that and yeah you know, seeing your mom and dad do their thing man and man I, i'm just like all right all right you know let me let me keep praying let me keep praying let me keep praying i'm praying i'm praying i'm praying but the more i prayed the darker it got it was darker than your backdrop bro i was there yeah. went through some things lost a lot of friends yeah honestly i lost you for a little while mm -hmm. you know I, I'm i was there you, 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 God used you in my life at that time, bro. Show me what it meant to fast water sandwiches. 
Yes, I remember the, the water sandwiches. I yes, remember. Lord. <laughs> yes, Lord. Uh, you hey, you got you got to be in the in circle to know about the water sandwiches. Um, man. I'm, oh, I'm yeah. trying to tell you, man, and just and, and to be honored at that time to be even called a jewel, a real jewel. Hey, we was deep, man. Oh, uh, Ambo, we was Ambo. Yes, it, 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 it was more. It was more than music. It was more than us being the first black boys choir of the state of Louisiana, commissioned by Governor Mike Foster. Mm -hmm. It was more than being on on those local TV plays. You know, it was more than uh, 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 having all the attention from the young girls and, and young ladies. It was more. It was fam. It like was fam. fam. And that's what kept me going. That's what kept me going. I felt like we was really a, a bride of Christ. Yeah, you we, get what I'm saying, bro? It was crucial. You know? And I kind of gave up on love after a while. Yeah. After that, after that, you know, I was going to kill her, bro. Yeah. I was going to kill her. I premeditated it. Being working in the oil field on land, I knew where to dump the body, where it would take them 10 years to find me. Find out I did. And it, everything. Look, it, me, right it, in the down. It really get that serious, man. Because love, love, love is 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 powerful. For God to create us and say that we are His best creation mm -hmm. out of everything that He He created. I don't understand how people could talk about the big boom and 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 this and that, but He created everything. And he say, we humans are his best creation. We tend to let him down. Yeah. Why? Because we don't know that four letter word. We uh, don't know what love is. Agape love. And, and uh, especially when we get married. Yeah. If, if Christ is not in the marriage of God Ooh. is not in marriage. Then it don't matter how long you be together. It don't matter how many kids you have, it's not going to work. Look, talk talk to the young brothers for a while on that, Cass. It's, it's not going to work. Cho choosing, ch choosing a spouse who doesn't have a relationship with Christ when you do, what did you learn from that, kid? <sighs> this ain't my interview. You know my story. Yes, Lord. <laughs> this is your interview. What did you yes, what did Lord. You Man, Kev, well, brothers, man. For me, I mean, like like you say, if 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 you a firm believer, like I was a firm believer, and I mean somebody that don't know Christ. Now we gotta watch out for that. Why I say that we gotta watch out for that? Because a lot of us grew up in a church. Mm -hmm. A lot of us grew up in a church, especially if you you know our our our, our skin, our, our ethnic, we grew up in some type of down south church. Mm -hmm. Whether it was Catholic, whether it was Baptist, Pentecostal, you know what I'm saying? We grew up in a church. That's where the difference come in. Yeah. Because you can meet somebody and think that they're not a believer, you know, or they're not on the level you on. But it's just that y'all don't y'all don't share the same uh, faith walk. See, when I met my kids, mom. She was a Catholic, mm -hmm. you know, going through the rosary, do the rosary, uh, do the ashes thing, the sign of the cross, all everything, just but still partying, still living it up, doing, yeah. doing, doing, doing what the world do. I felt like what the word say, if you have enough in you, you can make them a believer in due season and due time. So don't give up on it because love is powerful. Again, love is power. It, it can change things. So, okay, let's see. Well, got into it. No, no sex. Mm -hmm. No sex. Let's get married. You know what I'm saying? No sex. Uh, understanding where you come from, what you've been through and what you're going through. But let's work on where we need to go. Yeah. Now, if, if, if the man being a leader, young man being a leader in these things, then he should have that fruit of patience. You know what I'm saying? So I had a lot of patience. Yeah. 
a lot of patience, a lot of patience, a lot of patience, you know? And I always was the one of, it's not how you look. It's not about how fine you are or what you drive or what kind of credit you got or what kind of money you got. It's not about the powers between your legs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, Cause when God looks at us, he looks at us the same. Yeah. No difference. What he's checking is that heart posture. So that's where things start to go south, you know? And if these young cats can understand that, look, it's not about these things and you want a woman that's going to help elevate you. Mm. Uh, if you want a, uh, uh, if you want a woman that's, that, 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 that that's going to be your helpmate for one, stop looking for a girlfriend. Ooh, look for a girlfriend. Down. Stop break looking for a side piece, a baby mama. Uh, 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 a little, a little, what, what they call them thing? Man, I don't even know how them young cats talk no more. But uh, <laughs> like, no, don't look for that. Look for a wife. Build yourself up to be a husband. Mm. I had to learn, Joe. I had to learn that, like I said earlier in the story, that 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 being that I had my first child, knowing she was coming, we left from Ohio and came back to Louisiana. And I thought I was doing the right thing of being a man, mm -hmm. but I was trying to get the money, yeah. get the house, house, get the car, whatever, whatever, whatever. That wasn't it. What up, Mom Cassandra? My dear, how it's going? You know, I had I had to see what the Bible say. You know, the Bible say a husband is a protector and a provider. Mm. That's 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 the job obligations for a husband and a father. They both have the same, the same meaning: provide and protect. Yeah. Providing is not just with money, right? It's not just with money, man. Protecting is not just by the hands. You know, he say uh, what it was in Matthew chapter nineteen, verse four and six. He say, uh, "Have you not read?" That he who created them from the beginning made male and female and said, therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and fat and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. Mm -hmm. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let no man separate. You see, that's the thing. When, when a man finds a wife, he finds a good thing and he cling on to that wife. And he obtained favor from the Lord. Yeah. But young men, old men that don't understand these simple principles of marriage of, 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 of a husband and a wife. If, if you don't know that, you know, that, you know, that's the good thing. Yeah. Then where goes your grace? Yeah. You out of there. Where goes your favor? So Joe, let me ask you <laughs> all the stuff you see me go through with my past marriage. Have you seen that grace and that favor? Ooh. Because it wasn't a good thing. Mm. And I, I'm not talking about the person. Because, because we can't talk on a person like that because that's witchcraft. I'm mm. talking about the spiritual warfare behind that. It wasn't no holy matrimony. Yeah. See, if we don't understand that that, that holiness is, is, being, is being separated from yeah. the world. It's being set apart. It's being unique. It's being different. That's what holy is. And matrimony is the scripture that I just gave you when the two become one flesh. Yeah. So if you don't have a, 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 a wife or fiance in courtship leading to wife, if you don't have that that's sent by God and it's not set up, it's not different from what you used to be in. It's not different from what you experienced before. It's not unique. You know what I'm saying? Then yep. where's the good thing? Hey, you said something real crucial, Kev. Sent by God. That's a that's a that's a big difference, man. And 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 this is the thing, Kev. Because me and me and you walked a similar mile, man. When you come from that backdrop of being involved in the things that we was involved in. When it came time to choose and make those decisions, there were certain lessons we hadn't learned yet, man. Yeah. And we had to take the long route. Yeah. 
So if any brothers out there are truly listening, man, don't have to walk the miles like me and my brother had to, man. Hey, Ken, the miles hurt. Mm. Long gravel road. The, look, the, the miles leave scars. Mm -hmm. mm. Mm. If, if I would have known the importance, like you said, of, of having a holy God fearing separate wife set apart from the world see i didn't i didn't understand see me my thought process is i'm i'm superman and i i can i can save him. it's a reason why the words say don't be unequal to you mm. but in my foolishness i'm like oh no man i got that yes i got that yes i'm i'm at a state where i'm i'm not drinking i'm not smoking i'm not nothing then all of a sudden I, I make that decision and I find myself, I didn't went all the way back down the deep end when mm. I all the way this way. So, mm. the, so, the, so those decisions we make as men who we choose to connect to got to be very careful, Kev. Very. It costs, man. Very. It costs, man. Think, me think about the stuff that you were saying and, and how far it took you and the things that you was willing to do. Yeah, get that serious. Yeah. Yeah. And that's all that's all I had being that being that I got out of that marriage. You know what I'm saying? God pulled me away from that marriage. I could have easily be influenced back to the ways of this world. You get what I'm saying? But I I, I, I stuck with all the good memories. Mm -hmm. you know? I stuck with all the good memories. I stuck with all the good things. Yeah. Yeah, and I had to keep it going. So check this out. I left Louisiana in uh February. I seen another. Um, I seen another spirit just enter the room. Uh oh. Yes, Lord. Talk about it. <laughs> yes, Lord. <laughs> I left. I left Louisiana in, in, in February <laughs> of 2016. Mm hmm. And a couple of months after that. I wound up getting a phone call. I was just fitting to get a job. Uh, well, actually, I had a job at the in Laporte, hydro blasting, making some mm -hmm. good money, good money, man. Taking a class, they done somebody take a class to be a supervisor, everything. So I'm like, man, I'm finna get in the bag. I'm finna really show them young boy what it is to get a bag. And which you always was in the bag, Cam. I don't know what type of grace you got on your life. You always had the coldest job, bro. Is is. It was God. Like I could just say it was God. Learning experiences. Because honestly, even with that, bro, every single job I went to, I had good jobs, great positions, could have be supervisors, managers, bosses in the all field. I'm talking about big money. But God didn't allow me to look at it like that. What God was sending me to these jobs for was to save somebody else. Mm. That's what I learned. Because if I had that much of accolades and that much of uh, 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 of, of work experience, I would have been far off financially than where I'm at now. Yeah. So like you say, we had to go all the way back. And coming to Texas was my going all the way back. So to fast forward what I was saying, I get a call. Hey, I'm trying to move. And I ain't got nowhere to bring the kids. Can you take the kids? I just cried on the couch two weeks two weeks before this phone call crying crying my ex fiance was you're gonna be all right you're gonna be all right didn't even sleep in the same bed with this woman no nothing just slept on the couch just every night crying to god for my kids protection because mm -hmm. i felt like i birthed my kids you know what i'm saying people would tell me man i've never seen a father like you that love their children the way that you do it's oxymoronic to see a young black man feel like this about his children oh yeah Kev. i went to sleep one night on the couch my cousin that died in 2003 in a sebastian i got shot down in his mama yard i was mad at god everything about saint james everything about everything i threw it out the window at that moment right there 
because I'm like, God, how can you allow somebody to kill my cousin? A happy person, never had no beef, never treated nobody wrong, respectful, everything. And he just gave his life to you and invited me to go start going to Bible study. And mm -hmm. didn't kill him? You, 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 you take him? That's rough. I needed him more than you. Oh, I needed him more than you because I knew the end from the beginning and I know what's going to happen 20 years from now when you're going to need it. And I guarantee you 20 years later was that two weeks that I was on that couch and I had a vision. I fell into a deep sleep and I had a vision and God told me, I'm burning your children. And when he, when I heard the voice, I saw my same cousin. Now they say you, when you dream about people that passed away, familiar spirits and stuff like that. But God used my cousin to come to me in a dream in the same white Cadillac we used to ride in and say, look, Kevin, don't worry, I'm finna bring your kids. God told me to bring your kids. And that next day I got that phone call and said, I need you to take the kids. We're on the south side of Houston. Mm. Kids were sleeping in a U-Haul van for three days straight. Give me my children, man. I stopped everything, let the job go, got a job closer to home, sold my truck because the Medicaid didn't uh, kick in. So I sold my truck just to buy my daughter medicine because she had high risk allergies. And I walked to work six months straight. Mm. Went from 300 pounds to 245 real quick. Real quick. Father's love, man. Now look, after a couple of months, boom, 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 passed by. My son was nine years old at the time. We walk into the dumpster throw away some trash. He look at me, say, daddy, daddy, don't worry. God going to give you a wife. Mm. God going to give you a wife that's going to love you just like she love him. Mm. And you love her just like you love him, daddy. Don't worry. She coming. Young preacher, man. Nine years old at the time. Now he could have said, mama coming back. Mama going to get it right. Da 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 this and that. Or, the woman I was with then, you know, ba 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 boom, boom. But he said, a woman after God's own heart. That's what we talked about earlier, sent. Yeah. Sent. God already knew. He already knew. And I done told God, I said, I don't want no woman no more. Yeah. I don't want no woman no more, man. I, I, I'm not going to be a whore like my daddy neither. But I'm, I, I just, I, I don't want no man. I'm not gay. I just don't want no woman. I don't know, want no relationship. I want to focus on my children. And you, God, yeah, that's it. But God said, make me laugh and tell me what you're going to do. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks after that, I, yes, ran, sir. I ran across my wife, the wife that I'm married to today. Got him. My God. Got him. Wouldn't trade it for the world. See, when, when my great aunt told me, when, when she said that, that if God is not in that marriage, it's not going to work. But if God in it, it's going to last forever. I didn't know that God was using her to prophesy in my life right then and there. And I thought about it clearly after she passed away. Yeah. God told me and my wife, y'all need to get married now or I'm not going to bless nothing y'all touch. Hmm. I pull over on the side of the road and I told her, I said, God, see, we got to get married. She said, he told me the same thing. Mm. Said, Let's do it. Went to Walmart, get a ring. Her daddy was a pastor. He was, my birthday was August 11th. We got married August 13th. Birthday wow. on a Friday, got married on a Sunday. Resurrection, God gave me life back again. Hey, us brothers, man, will we be knowing? We be knowing, man. Telling you. We, now, we know we know. Let me ask you this. If if God wouldn't uh, allow you to go through what you went through, would you be where you at now? No. I remember recording a song at your trailer a long time ago. At that time, in that season, that was that season, 2014, 16. All the my steps, all the my steps, Lord. Mm -hmm. I remember taking a picture. With your wife, me and her did the song. You remember? Had everybody tripped out. They was like, oh, man, that's not fair. You got breezy on it. Like, man, you cheating. Like, nah, bro, y'all just don't know. Y'all just don't know what's the matter. I remember that, man. So I remember us taking a picture in your, in your kitchen. And it was me 
in the middle and you was on one side and and and, and brianna was on the other side and we was all doing the just listen you remember i still got that picture today mm -hmm. and i remember showing that to troy and malcolm and i said bro they gonna get married <laughs> Hey, bro, it's lightning outside right now. Hey, it seemed like everybody that that was around us, they they knew something was up, man. Everybody around us said they they, they had that same revelation, man. I said I said I said that for a reason because God showed me so many things vividly. He have not only given me discernment, but he gave me a kin spirit, and the reason why the ball eagle have a kin eyesight because it's the only creature that's been created even with humans that can look into the eyes of the sun without being blind mm. it can see the gamma rays to mere touch and when god give you that that gift you can see through everything and anything and i knew without a shadow of a doubt right then and there that was your wife now like you said we've been through similar walks when it comes to marriage bro our ex-wives can i talk about it can I talk about it? Hey, that's too exclusive. But okay, but I'm gonna just leave that there. But you already know. Yes, Lord. We we've been through it. So if if God wouldn't allow us to go through what we went through, and we had not had great faith, if we had all ye little faith and gave in, gave up, I would not be here right now. Have you stopped searching? He said, "But first seek ye the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all will be added unto you." But first, Zeteo, seek, find, search, go looking. But hold on. That's that same word when you say a man that finds a wife, finds a good thing and obtain favor with you, Lord. So hold on. So now that I find that good wife because I, I, I got faith in you, that, that, that my desires is to love and be loved, I delight myself to you. And you gave me exactly that. Mm -hmm. Being married to God is the greatest thing ever. Say it again. Being married to God is the greatest thing ever. One more time, because because one more time. Being married to God is the greatest thing ever. Fellas, if you meditate and understand what he just said, man, your whole life changed forever. Somebody type that for me. Being married to God is the best thing ever. If, if you can't, fellas, my young brothers, my young brothers, my young brothers, even in, even my OGs that's still out there looking and, and still living. Hey, if you marry God, marry him first. Hey, let me tell you why I say that, Joe. <laughs> you could be married to a good woman or a woman could be married to a good man. And you can be at work and say, baby, I got to go do a pickup game with the fellas after work, but I'm going to hurry up, swing by, and grab my jersey. Can you make sure it's, it's on the dryer for me? It's clean, it's on the dryer. And she could be like, oh, yeah, 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 but that's early in the morning, but get off at night. And when you get off and you go to get it and it's not there, it's not ready. But you still love her. Oh, that's probably an honest mistake. I'm going to grab it. Boom. So let's take that one mistake with, with somebody of you being in a marriage or in a relationship committed relationship courtship and they're never there to help value you mm -hmm. or uh elevate you that's broken promises that's broken promises but you see being married to god is so good and the best thing ever because he gave us the one promise that if we can hold on to that one promise, we'll be we we will we'll be forever in 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 right standing, forever in holy matrimony with Him. He said, "I will never leave you nor forsake you." Hey, that broke the whole story right there, man. Being married to God, that go for everybody, man. I'm gonna go ahead and, and I'm gonna go ahead and step back for everybody, man. If you if you can focus on being married to God, man. Now, keep in mind, he married to us. But if you could be married to him, man, that's life change forever. That's the game. That's game over. Game begins. You got to be the bride. He said we the bride. 
And like I tell my daughters, I tell I got three daughters, I tell them all the same. Prepare yourself to be a wife. Prepare yourself to be a wife. Uh, 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 uh. Dress like a wife. Modesty. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Generosity. You love everything. When he say, oh, he say, wives, submit to your own husbands as of the Lord. And husbands is the head of the wife as even Christ as the head of the church and his body and himself its savior. And now the church submits to Christ and also wives submit to every and in, in everything of their husbands. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her mm -hmm. and sanctified her and cleansed her by the washing of the word. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when he want to he want he want to see his bride without splendor, without spots, without blemishes. You know what I'm saying? So if we married to Christ and that being the best thing ever, we going to prepare ourselves. We going to prepare ourselves to be a good a good wife to him. We going to submit to him. You see young fellas, oh, <laughs> submission and control is two different things. That control Oh, that's something serious, man. A lot of them, even in the church, man, that 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 that's that that that's not seeking spirit and truth, but only do thy religious. Which see, I'm the head, I'm the priest of this priesthood. What I say go. Now nah, that's controlling my boy. That's a Jezebel. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus. Get thee behind me, Satan. But God made me leader of this stewardship. But hold on, a couple of scriptures he just said the two became one flesh. Mm -hmm. He say husbands submit to wives and wives submit to husband. What does that so word that word submit to? Agree to disagree. Mm -hmm. Understand with wisdom, knowledge, and knowledge. Submit yourself. You can't go tell God, well, God, you you say I'm the bride, and you the bride's groom. You got total control over me. Well, in that case, yes. But does he give us that same dominion over a household? No, it's called stewardship. Mm -hmm. He said, you're the head and not the tail. He said, you're above and not beneath. He said that you got to provide by washing in the word. You got to protect in that word. You know what I'm saying? You got to keep that full body armor on. When you go to war, you got to protect. You have you have your, your wife and your children as your first ministry. You yeah. see what I love about you, my brother, because you always elevate your wife. And your wife elevates you. And y'all both elevate your son. Mm -hmm. That's what it is for my wife. When my wife, when, when I got with my wife, she has three kids. I have three kids. She has two boys and a girl. I got two girls and a boy. We like the Brady Bunch. We just missing Alice. <laughs> Get what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And, 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 and she, she accepts them and nurtured them. And I remember my girls calling and saying, we want to get away from here. It's toxic. It, it, it's too controlling. It's too that Jezebel beast started going ham. Mm -hmm. Come, come on. And now God, you you don't feel like you lost a mom because God gave you a mom, mm -hmm. nurturing you, showing you how to be a woman of God, showing you how to submit to 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 to, to Christ. Yeah. See, they don't have no bar friends. So, so she can't show him how to submit to your husband. She can show you how to submit to Christ because that's the husband. You got to yeah. be married to God first. You got to be married to God first. And I tell my daughter, my oldest daughter all the time, if that man is not married to God, you don't need him. Word. You don't need him. Word. Submission and control is, you're right, Madea, is, is totally different. And, 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 and I'm going to plug something for the brothers, man. That the macho man stuff that we feel as manhood, man. The, the the more and more I get older, I realize that's that's the, the weakest form of manhood they got, man. Yeah. It, I don't know if it's because I'm getting up in age or or that's just how the process goes. But nah, man. When when you really start to see what it is, uh, you have the ability to keep all that manhood testosterone under control and, and be able to softly nurture your wife that take a lot more than going ham all day yeah 
So yeah. if if I'm gonna give stripes, man, I give stripes to the brothers who 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 who's are submitting to their wives and, and loving and nurturing on their wives like God called us to, because that's not no easy task, man. Yeah. Cause we, we built to just be ferocious he man. Yeah. <laughs> so it yeah. takes a lot. Cause cause I mean I, I guess it's it, it we, we, we can we can call it uh we can call it a second nature, you know. Uh we can, but at the same time we don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Because if we understand that word <laughs> In First Peter three and seven, it say, "Likewise, husbands, live with your wives in an understanding way. Mm. Show honor to the woman as the weaker vessel, mm -hmm. since they are her heirs with you of the grace of life, so that your prayers may not be hindered." So mm. why would God say, "Live with your wives in, under in an understanding way"? You see, that's what a that, that's what a controlling kicks in to the flesh. The flesh that don't understand, they 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 understand that they gotta be so macho, they gotta be so demanding, like like you ain't gotta this, you ain't gotta da, da, da. no no hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We gotta have an understanding. Yeah. If he say all I need from you is understand. Take yeah. your way back, man. You know what I'm saying? Why just I, why can't we communicate? Are you listening to what I say? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So he say they're, they're the weaker vessels, not saying that they're weak minded because they have some strong minded women. Like I know my wife for sure. I could send her out there with the wolves and she ready to eat. She, she'll become the line of Judas. Either you, you, you eat with me or you get eaten. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and that's in a body armor type of way. Yeah. Oh, uh, when, when he say, when, when he say that they're heirs with you, they're heirs with you uh, of the of the grace of life. Grace is unmerited favor. So let's go back to that, 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 that word again. A man that finds a wife finds a good thing and obtain favor with the Lord. That grace, grace is unmerited favor. God saying that if he calling me to be a king, you definitely have to have a queen. Check me. Yes, sir. We can't move like rooks and peons. It's it's kings and queens that stay on the backboard just watching, watching yeah. the wall, you know, and they inherit that grace. They inherit that favor with you. And the two become one and your prayer is not hindered because you got to remember that woman of God was praying for a man of God while that man of God was searching for a woman of God. Yes, sir. So the best way to study marriage and holy matrimony is to be married to God first. Mm -hmm. Nothing's good. Nothing's better. If if I could talk to the to the younger brothers, I would tell them when they in the path to making them decisions. When I was younger, if if I could have told my younger self, choose a woman on the guy that you aim to be and not who you are right now yeah 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 tell him again yeah 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 i like that choose choose a woman on the guy you aim to be and not the guy that you are right now if i if i could give him anything that's the sum of them getting of what me and you went through, if we could have spoke to our younger selves. We would have probably been boxing our younger selves in the back of the house. <laughs> Man, what's wrong with you? I'm serious. Because it's, it's, it's a decision just to make a decision by itself. Yeah. And, and, and in order to make that clear decision, you have to strategize. You have to sit down and think, how... Can I be an asset to this woman's life? Do I have what it takes? Am I a man of God for one? Do I have myself established? You know, because you don't know what she's going through on her end. 
but are you taken care of? Or are you stable? Mm -hmm. uh, do you have that consistency, not only with getting money, but building your relationship and your character in a godly manner? Ooh. So when I'm when I'm shooting, look, bro. <laughs> Ooh. When I saw the wife that I have now, I was 22 and married to my ex-wife. Mm -hmm. And she was working at the window in the McDonald's. Mm. And I pull up with my little brother, with Troy, and I say, man, that little girl pretty. He said, but the little girl only 16. I said, Poof. Shout out. I'm gone. I'm married anyway. Going through hell. But God started brewing some things up because he shoots shots and never miss. Steph Curry is a great shooter, but he missed a few times in his life. <laughs> he missed a few times. He say God don't miss, man. He don't miss. So when 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 years passed by, I used to see her at when she used to work at Win Dixie, uh, Popeyes. Uh, I saw, I saw all over the place and I would never talk to her. And I'm like, man, that, that, look, that look girl, beautiful. It's just something about her. When I see it, it's always a glow. Fast forward things. When I got divorced and I got put on a restraining order and child support, all this crazy stuff, went to jail three times, be honest, lies and all, drama. When I got out and I was at my brother and my cousin say, Okay, I've come to Bible study with me one night. We went to Refuge Temple. And when I went, now I was talking to my wife that I have now through Facebook on our messenger. We'll talk on messenger, inboxing and this and that, boom, boom, boom. But never linked up, never met up, nothing like that. I was going through a divorce. She was going through an abusive relationship, breakup. Never linked up. We're supposed to link up one day to meet in the park to just walk and talk. But it never happened. God, not crazy. We was both broken. A broken person can't fix a broken person. God says somebody got to heal. You yeah. know? So I went I went to the Bible study, and I looked, and I seen her sitting in the Bible study. I said, oh, no. I sit back in that pew just like that. I said, God, you cutting up tonight, bro. Right? And I talked to God just like that every day. Like, God, you, man. Why? But I, I can tell, I can tell I felt, them type of stories, too. I felt like a kid. So when it was all over, the Bible study was over and everything, she went, she went to her car. My heart was pumping fast, and I, I went behind her. And she hurry up, got in the car, and she started raising the window up real fast. And I'm knocking on the glass like, hey, you remember me? Facebook. <laughs> and she put a little crack like, uh, yeah, hi, okay, I got to go. You know, and she turned off, never seen her again. Two, the two years after that, something about this number two. Mm -hmm. the, 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 a few years, uh, two years after that, boom, 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 going through what I went through, boom, 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 this and that, want to move into Houston. And that's what my son prophesied. And then, boom, I lay down on Facebook one night just thinking about what my son just said that same night. And I'm playing and who you should know pop up. And I saw her face. I'm like, man, this guy just keep popping up. I click it, boom, add his friend. She accepted me. So uh, she texts, she inboxed me. Hey, how you doing? Like a couple of days later. I remember you. I said, oh, yeah, how you doing? And that's where it kicked off. That's where it kicked off, man. And she was coming back from Louisiana doing a little uh, entrepreneurship thing that she was doing. And she was like, you want me to stop and see you? You And I was like, I got kind of nervous. I felt I felt nervous. All the macho stuff, all the, oh, I'm hard. Yeah, I'm, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, Licking the lips and all that, nah, all that went out the window, Joe. No more LL. And uh, she came, she stopped by me. She's on her way to San Antonio. And we talked all night, bro, all night long. I got her a room. You know, I said, y'all just don't get back on the highway, you know, go get you some rest. That it is. And we talked, we talked, we talked all night, all night. And then that, that, that was it. it. It was magic after that. It was magic after that. I had to learn how to submit to the oracles of God first. 
and know what it truly means to love him with all my heart, soul, if I lost my children, if I lost my job, if I lost my money, everything like Job. I lost it all. I lost everything. They telling me, curse God. Curse God. Yeah, I'm gay. Yeah, I know who God is. I probably know him better than you. Just curse him. No. That's not the God that saved me 30 plus years ago on that operating table. That's not the God that that when I got set up in Macomb, that 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 healed my mouth without them having to put a plate in my face. That's the same God that pulled my mama out that accident when that car flipped over and glass was all in our brain and all that stuff, man, almost died. That's the same God that I seen my aunt get stabbed 17 times with a butcher knife set on fire yet a third degree burn and hit by a car at 70 miles an hour and still living today that's the same god i can always and i tell this even to my wife i have now i can always have another wife but when you make children that's your child mm -hmm. and god <laughs> we his children so he feel the same about us we can backslide and leave the church. We can we 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 can just give it all up. But God's still gonna be God. Mm -hmm. And 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 when I realized that, when I realized as long as I got my kids and God, I'm good. But God says not good for a man to be alone. You doing the works like Adam did. You done everything I told you to do. Now now rest. Psalms forty six ten favorite scripture be still and know that i'm god rest and when i rest in him when i abide in him when i rest in him and as i slept in him he was molding and, and making my wife and he gave it to me on a silver platter ain't no money ain't no title ain't no material Ain't no other woman, ain't nothing in this world. Yeah. Take away from God in my first ministry, my wife and kids. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I hope these young brothers understand that it's not too late. Even yeah. the young, young ones that's on that drill and on that on that real street stuff, man, God still love you. God still want to be married to you. Yeah. He want to be married to you. I done saw a killer that that was sentenced to life. Was supposed to do two life sentences. Got released. Got released. How do you beat that? Yeah. But when you surrender it all to him, all things are possible. Mm -hmm. Marry him, man. Marry him. Kev, that story was powerful, Kev. We didn't walk some miles, man. We didn't walk some miles, man. I'm proud. Look, I'm proud of you for never letting go, man. Yes, sir. That's my Mutual. word. Hey, that's my word, man. Mutual. Look. Mutual. I, I didn't see the blows. And you ain't never let go, man. And I want to say, I want to say, bro, thank you. Thank you for really being you. Word. I understand that God named you Brandon Spriggs, <laughs> <laughs> but he also named you Humble Joe. And people Look. don't understand what that word means. No, man. You are who you say you are, my brother. You the most humblest person. <laughs> world. Look. Glory to God, I done been through some things. But see, but that's what I said, hey, Kev. Thank you, bro. I appreciate it from the bottom because, like I said, nowadays with me living in a different spot, I'm surrounded by people, and a lot of them don't know where I come from. I I, I tell them all that what, what you see me doing, 
I've been loving on people for years, man. That's my life and my heart. It's not a title. It's not a position, man. I love people for real, and I walk life with people for real. If I say you my brother and I love you, I mean that. Yes, sir. Before all that other stuff come, I yes, mean sir. that. So like I said, man, you've been my brother, going to remain my brother. Look, I appreciate you from the bottom for yeah. coming through. And like I said, hey, we're going to set it up because – they heard you in your story, but I don't I don't think they understand when it comes to the music though. But that's gonna be a whole nother yeah. <laughs> I'm actually I'm actually working on a book, you know, a, a book of my life right now. You know, and, and, and it's it really truly getting in depth of everything. This was just the marriage part, you know, being married, you know, but the stuff I bear witness, you know, being in the ecclesia, being in the church. You know, the things I've bear witness in witchcraft, voodoo, you know, or sorcery, uh, being in a cult, you know what I'm saying? All this stuff, man, I, man, the devil pushed me off a bridge and I'm going to just say that and I'm going to be done with that because I don't want to, you know, spoil the book. But the devil pushed me off a bridge at seven years old, sat on my chest and laugh in my face and told me he wouldn't stop until he get me mm. when I was seven and I'm going on 40. And I still remember. So people don't understand the things that I've been through, man. Yeah, buddy. And and I thank God for even having you to acknowledge me for who I am. You know, it made me feel a different type of way because I don't uh, like you say I I'm surrounded by people as well. Honestly, I'm surrounded <laughs> just with my wife and kids. I'm I'm in a foreign land. I'm in a foreign place. I don't know nobody. And uh, I'm I'm by myself. I don't have no nobody to talk to i don't have nobody to call you know so just just being invited on this platform with you to share the, the, the store to help people in marriage you know is a blessing you know i appreciate you my brother uh i'm gonna always be real joe for you you know what i'm saying anytime any place anywhere no matter how far yes sir you know <laughs> so, my PC, man. he already <laughs> already Oh, <laughs> real joy in the building, man. Sure. So, hey, I appreciate shout, out, shout out to your wife. Till I said, hopefully one day I get to meet her. Tell all the young ones, Unc said he love him, man. Yes, sir. Look, keep doing your thing, man. Keep following God. Keep submitting to God. Keep acknowledging you got a good thing. Look, we gonna continue praying for you yes, and your sir. wife. Cause like I said, when you own that that mission, and even when you do get sent favor you gotta fight yeah well we we we, we gonna be doing a, a a marriage podcast you know that, that's that's one thing that uh i wanted to get with you about to show me how to mess with all that uh, oh, that's we want to god been telling us for the past month now i've been prophesied to over and over again so i feel like god saying look it's, now is the time because it's important to him marriage is important to him right now for in this season in this season right now in this season it's it's important to him and and the bible say even if you're not in holy matrimony with a significant other then you are still by single married to christ you mm -hmm. know what i'm saying so marriage period is important to god right now so we we trying to get de in depth and get into that and help people with that and yeah it don't it don't cost okay no 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 nah. even if you got the idea that it costs all type of money to do it no it don't Look, I don't care if I got to do it with just a, 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 a next tail. <laughs> Look, I got to go back and chirp it. The mission got to get done. I got to <laughs> obey the father. Obedience is greater than sacrifice. I honestly don't care. If that's 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 how I looked at it. Whenever he told me I was starting to get caught up in the way I need to get this type of cat, he said, nah, just use what you got. Yeah. Worry about all that other stuff later. Use what you got. Yeah. I'm and passing it, that word on to you, right? Just use what you got right here, right now. Yes, sir. Cause it's good to hear people's stories, man. You really motivated me as I sat down and watched all your TikToks one night, man. And I'm, I'm listening to testimonies after testimonies, man. Crying, laughing, learning, all at the same time. You know, I'm like, bro, God really be using this dude, bro. And I don't think people really know <laughs> Lord of God, the depths of this dude's heart, man. Because God say, love that God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Check. We know you do that. Ever and anybody know that you love God more than anything. And love thy neighbor as you love yourself. 
that's the part that we as as Christians, we as believers, we as people, period, struggle with sometimes because they have people that you just don't want to deal with. But God called you to be humble. You know what he told me one day? I said, God, man, I, man, look, I don't like dealing with people. He said, I ain't call you to like them. I command you to love them. Ooh. Yes, sir. Look, that's that check real quick. Yes, sir. And that's what you do, my brother. So you keep pushing, man. I pray that God bless everything that you touch, man. Let every soul that's underneath your feet be planted good soul. Love, every love you, my brother. I just know it's not about the material. I want to be able to be in heaven when God say, well done, my good old faithful servant. And I see Joe with crowns and rubies all the way around his head. <laughs> I know them rubies represent the lives you save, the souls you save. Man. I want that thing to look like a, uh, they think they wearing them diamond tested chains. That boy, that boy, rubies. Bling, Kevin, bling. Last night we was in a leadership class, man. And I'm and I'm getting off here because I'm going to get my wife some time. But last night we was in yes, class and, and that was the one of the first thing I said. Because like I said, we, we around people and it's, it's a new setting. And I'm like, man, I've, I've never wore a title of, of pastor or prophet or anything else i said but i've been loving on them sheep for years in that field man hey years and years and years and years Kev. you know what you call it <laughs> you call that a sheep dog see we talk about the shepherd and the sheep a lot but what about the sheep dog because any farmer that's really a farmer and they know how to work them grounds and work them animals and when they shepherd the sheep they know they got to have that wolf dog to protect. Mm -hmm. Be out there for the front, ready to battle, ready to get it in there, man. It's my time. It's my zone. I'm going even if I go alone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm going in there. Yeah. And then that's what you do, my brother. I learned I learn a lot of stuff from you, bro. I ain't ashamed to say, man, I'm not, you know what I'm saying? Who am I? <laughs> I respect that, man. And look, believe it or not, man. The, the whole time, every single one of y'all was teaching me something too, man. Mm-hmm. Amen. Hey, that's the beauty of it, though. Amen. That's the beauty of it, though. When when you really see it as as every single person around you is there to teach you something. Yeah. And and to me, that that's humility. When when you throw away all the money and all the titles and everything else. And you say every single person around me is better teach me something. That's humility to me, man. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. No matter how high I ever go, I don't ever want to let that go that every single person around me is teaching me something. I don't care if I put a collar on. Mm -hmm. I don't care if I, I become the highest paid. Bit. I don't ever want to let that go that every single person around me is teaching me something. Yeah. That's the mind frame I, I kept forever and I still to this day. Every single person that I'm in contact with is there to teach me something. Because God gave every single person something to give to the body. But it's up to me to say, what grace do Kev got on his life that he can give to me? Mm. Or, or am I too prideful to actually be able to see the grace that Kev have on his life so I can receive from him? Man, you got a halo around you, brother. Oh man, you <laughs> hey, I'm, 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 hey, I'm, I'm listening to you, bro. And I know, I, I know it's probably your computer screen, your phone screen, something, but I know you got a black backdrop. But I see an image behind <laughs> and it's light. <laughs> Look, that's my, my beautiful light in here, man. Man, I see a halo, man. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm listening, but I'm getting tripped out right here, and I'm like, wow, thank you, God. Continue to use him. Look, I, I, I got to keep clicking my computer to get a little light added in here. But you got that light all over you, my brother. Word. And you keep being the light of the world, man. You keep being the salt. Preserve that good meat, man, that's out there, man. Yeah. Because for every 99, he looking for that one. Yeah. He looking for that one. Keep doing what you're doing, man. Uh, keep elevating. God bless you, your wife, and your son, man, and everything and everyone around you, my brother. I appreciate this time. It was an honor. Like you see, we got to get back to the wives, and I love you. Yes, I'm sir. Know my number and all my social media accounts, man. I'm there. I'm there. Look, I got you, y'all. We going out with a song. It's time for both of both of us to get on husband duty. 
our first minister. You know what time it is. Already. Now. It's time to get the real work, man. <laughs> I'm coming, man. Look. Hey, we love y'all. We're going to go out with a song. Y'all stay up. Y'all keep loving. Y'all keep giving. Thank you, Ken, for, for taking us on the mile in your shoes, my brother. Yes, sir. We Bye. out, y'all. To my queens, I see y'all in a different way. It's more to y'all than posing. Posing pictures on your Facebook page. God giving power to uplift a man and make a slave. Speak life into our dreams. Our task down and watch us fade away. Know your position, cause you're vital to the family structure. No replacing any mother. Careful how you treat your love. Elegant, heaven sent etiquette is like no other. Her love is better than butter biscuits right out the oven. Know who you are, don't let this world define you. Shape or mold you, God's daughter, queen of nations. There's no box to ever hold you. Life creator, who protect the heaven sent. Love injector, backbone, best give ever. Worth more than hitting treasure. High speed life, cause this world is trying to turn you cold. Replace that all the stone with flesh. We need your love to make us whole. Take back your crown and hold us down. Together, we won't fold you back to love how God intended change to make this family Repeat all this life is tough said you gotta keep trying